Hello, my soccer universe. The third edition of the UEFA Nations League is in the books and we have the third champion in Spain. And now we complete the country sweep. The first one was Portugal, then we had France and in the middle, of course, is Spain. Croatia, unfortunately, still not a title. This was the closest one that they ever got. Uh, let's be frank about it. That final I was so excited about the Nations League overall and the really final four, but that final was a stinker. That was a real stinker. And I'm even a little bit annoyed because I I wouldn't have anyway, but I didn't even have the option to watch the third place game. Um, and that one was much better because, you know, the shackles were off and you can actually do something. And the Italians struck that one. So yeah, um, I would say we'll jump right in very briefly again on this third place game. Italy were just more efficient. I mean, Di Marco, who did not play in the semi-final and kind of took it personally, I guess, scored around the sixth minute uh, to make it one in Frantesi with the second shot and goal. There was a hint of a handball uh, slash offside in there, but it wasn't. And uh, Frantesi makes it 2-0. The Dutch completely shocked, uh, try to create more chances, throw everything at the Italians and the Italians basically say, okay, we're going to see that one out in very un-Mancini-like ways. And I hope that the Italian national team is not going this way. Bergwijn gets a goal for the Dutch. However, Chiesa uh, does one counter-attack and uh, Fratesi sends Chiesa, who just runs, 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 makes it 3-1. That more or less sells the game. Yes, Wout Weghorst scores an offside goal and Gini Van Aldum in the 89th makes it 2-3. Then there was a huge stoppage time. However, the Italians hang on and have a second third place finish in the Nations League overall. Um, and Ronald Koeman has a torrid start to his second stint as a Dutch national team manager, where he lost now three out of four and the one win was against Gibraltar. On the other side, yeah, you played France, you played Croatia, you played Italy and probably all three nations I would at the moment put ahead of the Dutch. But yeah. Uh, there's definitely some work to be done. Uh, remember that Ronald Koeman actually took over in the first UEFA Nations League where he actually managed to reach the final four and lose the final and then Barcelona came on knocking. I still have some hope that uh, he will get the Dutch some places, but I think there are bigger problems for the Dutch at the moment overall than um, I think Ronald Koeman. And as for the Italians, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like their approach in this game at all. Uh, from what I read also in general, I I think that this uh, title that they won two years ago, this was the last big hooray of a generation. There is good stuff coming, coming, but I think it needs some fresh ideas. And yes, uh, not many of the squad are left, but I think it needs some fresh ideas. And I'm not, at this moment, I want to give my genie the um, uh, benefit of the doubt, but I also have to say at this moment, I have the feeling that he is, does not provide the correct answers. That's it for the third place matchup. As I said, I only saw highlights and not much more. I don't watch the entire final and I have to say my attention span went by the wayside. Uh, the latest it got to overtime. Uh, first things first, I was really impressed how many Croatia fans were in Rotterdam. This was a home game for Croatia. And while one may think this may boost the Croatians to go forward and, you know, get the title, get the support, get your first title ever, crown Luka Modric's, uh, Modric's uh, career, I think it hampered Croatia a little bit. But also in general, I mean, those are two teams that are very well known for their superior midfields, but not necessarily for the strike force up front. I mean, if I think just about it, uh, Morata up front, I think he's a much better striker than people make him out because he's more um, known for his misses. Kramaric, I think he's a good striker, but he's more like a mid-table Bundesliga top striker than a real uh, clincher up front. And so a midfield of Modric, Brozovic, Kovacic, and then uh, having him Pajalic and um, Perisic supply, you know, there's a lot of good stuff there for Croatia. But I think at the very back and at the very front, they're not that good. And I think similar things can be said for Spain. And that was the game. Uh, overall, I can just say I felt that for... First half was rather even. 
uh, with Croatia even drawing at times a little bit more possession. Uh, bigger chances though for Spain, but nothing that is edge of the seat stuff. I think in the second half, Croatia started out really well. Where uh, There was one good uh, chance. They have to get the ball on the goal again. Spain very late on. I think Ansu Fati had a good chance to get a late winner, but it wasn't... It was little chances there. It was more neutralization. However, one could see the longer the game went on, the more tired this Croatia squad seemed. Yet they already played in overtime. And despite their record in overtime, where they are really, really, really uh, good. Spain were just better. Spain were just on the day better. And I think all that Croatia could hope for are penalties. And that's what they got uh i cannot i mean i cannot really remember any big chances as i said the game was a, a snooze fest or night will game in a way where uh, yeah uh it was edge of the seat in the sense that you want to know who's winning but then you know um while i was definitely more for croatia in this one uh it was not edge of the seat stuff where i'm really enthralled in it because i do enjoy both teams but i'm not a huge fan of either of them there was not a bad or a good guy for me winning uh as i said i would like to have seen croatia finally win a title um uh before we get to the panel shootout also and we also have to always have to talk jersey matchups uh here as well and uh, too often for I forget it made some sense However, I still think that Croatia could have played in their home jerseys against Spain in all red. Or even with uh, navy pants. I think this might have just worked. Yes, there's a little bit red on there. Uh, it was... I like I like the color matchup per se, but I think it was two very dark teams against each other. Contrast there, but uh, it was also, you know... Um, it was not ideal. Let's put it that way. Although I do like uh, the Croatia jersey. When it comes to penalties, I mean, uh, the penalty record for Croatia is outstanding. There is no doubt about it. Four penalty shootouts, four times the win. And they are the only nation who managed to win in two consecutive World Cups. Two consecutive penalty shootouts in a row. And while the one in Russia, I didn't count as much because both Russia and Croatia uh, advanced through the penalty shootout. So one of them had to do it. The second one, where they first beat Japan and then Brazil in a penalty shootout, that was rather, rather impressive. Uh, I did not know much about the penalty takers from Spain, but I have to say, you, the first six penalty takers, those were excellent penalties. I mean, what Vlasic did, what Joselu did, what Rodri, Brozovic, Modric, Merino, all perfect. Uh, not even There was not even a chance of those being saved. However, uh, when Lovromaya uh, stepped up, I already had a little bit, oh, this is the first one where I'm not so sure. And of course, he takes it in, in, in the center and... Um, Une Simon saves it with his foot. Actually, a brilliant save. How is media? He sees the ball is coming here, he, his way and gets the foot on it. And don't put it on the center, you need to put it higher. It was a little bit easier off the line, but Une Simon has really figured that one out. He did this very, very, very well. Then Asensio makes it 4 3, so all the pressure on Perisic who gets it done, and then Laporte can win it and put it on the crossbar. And I thought, ooh, major swing towards Croatia. However, Petkovic had a similar, not very assured demeanor as Lovro Maja. And sees his effort saved again. Very nicely, you know, not on the floor. And I want to get back that at the moment, everyone tries to go center high or whatever, and then the places they also go high. Uh, there is some something to be said. Put it high, up in the corner, but not half height. But if you put it on the floor, and you can do that, especially Pat Fedrich, who, who didn't play all, the, all, all, all much, it's really hard for the goalie to save, but that didn't happen. He sees his save, and then Danny Kavachel, Danny Kavachel converts. And that was the winner for Spain, and Spain win the third edition of the Nations League. They also end the title drought. Uh, since the Euros 2012. Interesting sides that uh, Jesus Navas skipped the entire title um, series for Spain. I think from 2014 on, just before the World Cup, he wasn't called up any, any, anymore. And Spain has, has won a title. He's back in the squad. Spain wins the title. Yes, there is the Confederation Cup 2013, so it's not a very, very perfect statistic overall. But yeah, as I said, not a great final. I felt a little bit sorry for Croatia, but I think um, Spain does deserve it. On 
Though you also have to remember that they only made it to this Final Four. And I know it's called the Finals, but honestly, Final Four sounds for me, it's more natural to me. Um, they only made it through a last minute goal from Morata in a game in Portugal that made them win the group. So just just, just putting it out, out, out there. But from what I could see from Spain, they were better against it, it, Italy. They were also better against Croatia. So overall, they deserve the title. What makes me happy is I bought this shirt. And there's a title attached to it. So I still have my streak up that I, except for the 2006 one where I was at the World Cup, uh, I have all the Spain shirts there uh, from title winning teams. So goes to say it was a good investment, those 25 bucks. Um, also want to mention there is another Nations League winner, the CONCACAF Nations League. Uh, the US beat Canada 2-0, just mentioning they have not seen much uh, after they completely annihilated Mexico in the semi-finals. And then I want to also briefly talk about the future of the Nations League, which I think they're making now a good adjustment. Um, they keep the format with the groups, where group stage play will be for the new season, which is then the 24-25 season. Uh, you have the three uh, fall slots to determine uh, the final rankings in the groups. However, uh, there will then be that the first place team gets promoted, uh, but the second place team also gets a chance. So for a first place goes up, fourth place goes down. So those are straight reach, but then there are relegation uh, games between second place teams from, uh, for instance, League B against third place team from uh, League A, which adds another slot and also ties a little, little bit together. And then in League A, the second place teams and the first place team will play a quarterfinal, two-legged, which I think is also interesting, which kind of prevents now this, um, you know, we had the group play in, I mean, due to the, to the World Cup, it was last, last summer, so it was a huge gap as well. Uh, but it puts it all closer together and played within a season, which I think makes a whole lot of sense overall. So uh, we have it now. It will be played in fall, the group stage play. Then uh, in the March slot, um, we have the quarterfinals uh, and the relegation uh, playoffs. And then the final four is still in the summer, a standalone fixture. I was, I think this is really good. I was contemplating whether it wouldn't be better to play the whole thing within a calendar year. Um, but, you know, I think the way they have it done to kind of have it in all the group play and all the players a little bit closer together, I think this does make some sense. And yes, the last two Nations League were definitely hit by COVID, so um, hard to say. But the Nations League is here to stay and I think it's a good competition and hear me. This will at least, at least replace the European qualifier sooner or later uh, if it doesn't become the more important competition. I think this is the future of the Euros um, because you don't have, you know, uh, hosting a big tour tournament is becoming a huge, it's, it's great for a country, but it's major investments there. The Nations League don't have that, but you have also, it is a European tour tournament. You have a group stage, you have the 16 best teams up there. It's home, home and the way it's played all over Europe. There's many good things going for that. I actually enjoyed the idea of the Nations League. So did I do for the Confederations Cup, but I see that this was not a good uh, tournament. But the Nations League, I think, there's the future in there. There's the future in there and maybe one could uh, expand Nations League play to also serve double up at least as qualifiers for a World Cup or so on. Or maybe have done a World Nations League as well, you know, have one year the European, one year the World Nations League. Just putting things out there. I know the traditionalists will hate it, but I think this was a good, good idea. At least get rid of real, real friendless, but I think it's even more. And given how this game was played yesterday, you could see both wanted to win that one. In any case, those are my final thoughts on the future of the Nations League. We put a wrapper on that, that one. I'm looking forward to the next edition, which happens after the Euros in 24. Now it's all about European qualifiers and getting there. I um, would like to hear your thoughts on this uh, Nations League Final Four and also on my thoughts on, on the future. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!